What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Fall 90 and today it is finally time for the week 27 predictions of the Premier League. Now before we go any further, if I could just ask you real quick to just drop a like on the video, subscribe and turn on notifications because it's about to get very busy in the world of football and for this channel. We have Premier League, FA Cup coming to the channel, Europa League and Champions League so it's going to be very busy so definitely subscribe, turn on the bell so you don't miss a single video. I want to give another shout out to Dylan Tate who left his predictions on the previous Premier League predictions video so if you want to be featured in the next episode of the Premier League predictions which will be week 28 then leave your predictions down in the comments below for how you think these games are going to go and before we go into week 28 it's time to look back at all of the week 27 results now they were spread quite far apart but you know we made our predictions for the entire game week even though it was over a week period in one video so we're gonna have a little look back and see how I did at the time of recording Man City replay their game against West Ham that was postponed tomorrow so I don't know the result of that but I predicted a 6-0 win to Man City so I think by the time this is uploaded you guys might know how that game went but I currently don't but anyway kicking it off we had Everton versus Crystal Palace I predicted that Everton would get a comfortable enough 2-0 win and they won three goals to one so about as close as you can get to being right you know the correct winning margin just not the right distribution of goals the next game, Brighton v Watford, I correctly predicted that they would draw 1-1. The game after that, Sheffield United versus Bournemouth. I, again, I correctly predicted that Sheffield United would win 2-1. I actually got the alert that Bournemouth went 1-0 up. And I was with my dad at the time. And I said to them that I said to him that Bournemouth wouldn't win that one. And Sheffield United would win. And they did 2-1. As I said, Man City, I predicted them to beat West Ham 6-0. But that hasn't happened yet. We'll move swiftly on. Wolves versus Leicester. I did predict a low-scoring draw. I didn't predict, however, that it would be a no-scoring draw. You like that? That was pretty good. I predicted a 1-1 draw between the two teams and it actually ended up being a nil-nil draw which was interesting. Southampton Burnley I predicted the right score line just the wrong way around. I predicted that Southampton would win two goals to one but Burnley actually swapped it around and won away from home at two goals to one so a fantastic result for them there. Norwich v Liverpool I predicted it to be easier for Liverpool than it was. I predicted a 4-0 win but Liverpool again getting the title winning ugly 1-0 win thanks to Sadio Mane over Norwich. Aston Villa v Tottenham, I predicted a 3-1 win to Tottenham, and I was very, very close. It ended up being a 3-2 win to Tottenham, thanks to two stoppage time goals, one in the first half and one in the second half from Hyungmin min Son to win them the game there. Arsenal v Newcastle, I predicted a 2-0 win to Arsenal. I looked at the scoreline about 80 minutes into the match, saw it was 2-0, and thought, hey... Another another good prediction for this week. As you can see, it's been a good week for me. Uh, but then they went and scored two more uh, after 90 minutes, making it 4-0 to Arsenal. And seeing Lacazette score his goal and just the passion, he's so, you know, he, he hasn't scored for a long time. I think he really, really needed that goal. He was just so sort of relieved and ecstatic at the same time. And then Chelsea Man United, I predicted a 2-1 win to Chelsea. And, and boy, was I wrong. Man United, they, they played fairly well. They do look pretty solid at the back. Bruno Fernandes looks really, really good in the middle. Fred is playing really well lately. Chelsea, they did suffer the blow of losing Kante in the first half. And then for the first goal, Christensen had just come back on after getting a nosebleed. And he it, normally he would go up for the aerial duel with Martial. But I'm guessing his confidence wasn't that high because he didn't even jump, allowing Martial to rise above him and score the goal. Man United won 2-0. There was the VAR controversy with Harry Maguire. If you watch the replay, it looks bad. It looks, oh, it looks so bad oh I was cringing watching it it's like oh I don't want to know about that but it, it just wasn't Chelsea's uh, day everything went the way of Man United who you could say, despite Chelsea's misfortunes with injuries, substitutions and whatnot, Man United did deserve the win. So, kicking it off for week 27, we have Chelsea again in a, a very, very exciting fixture. It has to be said, Chelsea up against Tottenham. Mourinho up against his former club at Stamford Bridge. Now, Chelsea's home form hasn't been that great. Tottenham's away form hasn't been that great. Tottenham and Chelsea, you could say they're on equal wavelengths at this point. So, I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. It often is between Chelsea and Tottenham, and I think Chelsea are going to score a couple of goals because the last few times they've played Tottenham they you know they, they have scored a few goals I'm going to go for a high scoring 2-2 draw I can't separate the teams as I said Tottenham's away form's not great Chelsea's home form's not great they're both good teams with good players uh, I was going to maybe go for a Tottenham win but I just, I can't. I can't do that. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. The next game is Burnley up against Bournemouth. Bournemouth slightly rejuvenated over the recent weeks. They did lose to Sheffield United. But before that, getting onto a, a bit of a run. And Burnley, solid as always, doing very, work, very well in the middle of the table. I'm going to go for a home win here. Bournemouth don't travel particularly well. I'm going to go for a solid 
2-0 Burnley win. I'm going to say maybe 0-0 at halftime, 1-0 after like an hour, and then like an 85th minute 2-0 clincher for Burnley. The next game is Crystal Palace up against Newcastle. Traditionally a very low scoring game. I'm pretty sure in the last at least six times these teams have met. No team has scored more than one goal. It's been either 1-0, 0-0 or 1-1. Uh, so I'm going to go for a similar result here. Newcastle just coming off the back of uh, a disappointing performance against Arsenal losing 4-0. Uh, Crystal Palace, what was their, their result in the previous week? They, they did lose to Everton at Goodison Park, which is quite a tough place to go, to be honest. I think at Selhurst Park, they will be able to keep it tight, as Roy Hodgson loves to do. And I'm going to go for a 1-0 win to Palace. The next fixture is Sheffield United up against Brighton. Sheffield United, one of the teams I've been predicting uh, quite well this season. Brighton's away form, it's not that great. Sheffield United are looking pretty good. They're looking better than Brighton. So I'm going to go once again, similarly to how I predicted Sheffield United to beat Bournemouth, two goals to one. Another South Coast team, beginning with a B, I'm predicting Sheffield United to beat Brighton, two goals to one in this fixture. The next one should be a very interesting, I'm going to go for a high scoring game. It is Southampton up against Aston Villa. And looking back at previous fixtures between the two teams, it has been fairly high scoring. Aston Villa obviously just coming off of a 3-2 loss to Tottenham. Them. That was at home where they do tend to perform better at Villa Park. Southampton, surprisingly, in my opinion, losing at St. Mary's Stadium to Burnley. I think they're going to have to try and whip themselves back into shape, back to winning ways. And I think playing a team like Aston Villa, whose form is inconsistent to say the least, I think this would be a great time for them to do that. I'm actually going to go for them to score three goals. I don't often, you know, give teams like Southampton, Burnley, Brighton, all these teams lower down you know, that many goals in games. I'm going to go for a 3-1 win to Southampton, to the Saints in this fixture. The next game, probably alongside Chelsea and Tottenham, my game of the week. It is Leicester City up against Manchester City. Now, obviously, when I recorded the previous Premier League video and, and also my Champions League video with Man City, I didn't know about the Champions League ban. We don't know for certain that it's going to stand. They will definitely appeal it, of course, because they, they might as well appeal it. Uh, but Man City, uh, they're all in, the, all in the news recently. And I think this is going to be a very, very close game. Leicester in the previous week, lucky, I suppose you could say, to get the draw against Wolves in the end. Um, you know, with Wolves' disallowed goal. Fine margins again from VAR, but Leicester do perform much, much better at the King Power Stadium. So I think this is going to be a very, very close game. I think both teams will score because although Man City have gone a couple of games this season without, without scoring, I don't see it. And Leicester will score at the King Power Stadium. I'm 90% sure of that. I'm going to go for a Manchester City win, but I'm going to say it's going to be very close. I'm going to go for a 2-1 away win to Manchester City. Now, moving back to another Manchester side, Manchester United, of course, up against Watford United. They need to build from that win against Chelsea. Uh, obviously, in the previous week, they had another nil-nil draw with Wolves. They love a draw against Wolves, but I think Manchester City need to hit the ground running, taking the momentum they got from Stamford Bridge. And I think against Watford, they are going to be able to do that. Watford getting an away draw against Brighton is it's not the worst. Uh, I just think this is the wrong fixture for Watford to uh, to perhaps think they're going to get some points from. I'm going to go for a 3-1 win to Manchester United in this fixture. Moving on, we have Wolves up against Norwich. Wolves chasing that top five spot. I'm not sure where exactly in the league they sit, but it's somewhere around sixth or seventh, maybe eighth. I'm not entirely sure, but Wolves are looking good. They're look looking solid. They don't really concede many goals, and they don't normally score many goals, but they are going up against Norwich, who are not the best. I know they, they held Liverpool essentially to a 1-0, uh, you know, a 1-0 loss instead of, you know, a heavy loss. But I think a team against Wolves, like, I think Wolves will be able to get the win quite comfortably. I'm going to go for a 2-0 win to Wolves to keep their run of form going. Now, the next game promises to be a very, very exciting one. It is Arsenal up against Everton. I think it's going to be high scoring. Arsenal and Everton, they've had some high scoring games in the past. Arsenal putting five past Everton on multiple occasions recently. I think at the Emirates, Arsenal are definitely a home form side and Everton also a home form side. So I think, you know, Arsenal are the favourites, of course, in this fixture. And I'm going to go for a high scoring 3-2 win to the Gunners. I think that would be a very exciting game for what game to watch. It would make the league table very interesting because Everton currently sit above Arsenal in the league table. And maybe potentially with Manchester City being banned from UEFA competitions, Arsenal can be pushed to push into the top five, <laughs> which is... Uh, 
kind of weird to say but there we go because man city are obviously going to finish in the top four so if they do get banned their place will demote down to fifth place and europe will move down respectively and if man city win a domestic cup as well then the europa league will also be moved down the league table once again i think to as low as eighth place which surely arsenal have to get by the end of the season the next and final game of the week is liverpool up against west ham as i said i predicted west ham to to take a six nil beating by manchester city uh, on the wednesday the 19th but it's the 18th of February at the time of recording. Liverpool, I think, at Anfield will beat West Ham comfortably. I'm going to go for a 3-0 win in this one. So that is going to do it for my week 27 Premier League predictions. But as I said, it's getting very busy on the channel. If I go to the upload schedule real quick, uh, so we've got the Premier League week 27 predictions on the 20th. So you guys would know the Manchester City result. Uh, and then a week from now, we have week 28. But then in March, it gets busy. FA Cup on the 3rd, Premier League on the 5th, Champions League on the 8th, Europa League on the 10th, Premier League on the 12th, and it just keeps going. There's going to be like three videos a week, 17th, 18th, and 19th. I'm uploading Europa League, Premier League, and FA Cup quarterfinals. So the next month is going to be very, very busy on the channel. So as I said, subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss a single video. Leave your comment down below if you want to be featured in the next episode of Premier League Predictions in a week's time. And I will see you in the next video very soon.